Okay, so uh, I just want to line up my perspective with this um, photo that I've got here. And so uh, I've got this perspective in Revit, which is um, showing the things that I want, but I might need to change the angle slightly to line it up with that image. Uh, and so to compare them, uh, a trick I've worked out with Revit is using sheet. Uh, here I've got just a um, the default sheet, which is this horrible AO sheet that you start off with in Revit. You can use any sheet. You're not going to be using it for printing. It's just to work on. Uh, and so I've got that view, 3D view 5, with the uh, view I had open. So I'm going to drag that onto my sheet. It doesn't even matter how big it is. So I can leave it at that size. And uh, it's, it's actually a bad idea to change the size because that'll affect the original view and you don't, don't want to do that. So uh, now I'm going to use, um, oh, on the insert tab, the uh, image tool just to insert my uh, image. And oh, I've got a copy of it here. Actually, no, I'll get this one. Yeah, I think I'll use this one. So it's DSC 0225. So I'll go and uh, grab that file. That's one. Yep. Okay, so it'll probably be really big, so I'll just put that to one side and then I'll stretch that down using just the um, ellipse on the corner. So it's roughly the size of the uh, perspective. Perfect. So when you line it up, uh, Revit will show the um, background uh, as transparent, which is a nice thing. And it's good if you can line the bottom of the image up with the bottom of your perspective. That'll help make it easier to line up your um, uh, your render settings. But for now, uh, well, I, I want to. I do want to move it down, so I might have to just nudge that slightly. I've just got a bit of a gap there. Also, scaling. Try and keep the proportions similar. So there. Mm, so about that is what. I want and uh, so a bit more stretching here. So I'm looking at the horizon really. So I can I can tell the horizon here would be a little bit above sea level, probably behind that hill. Uh, we've got the horizon line going through there, and then in my my uh, my own perspective, my horizon line will be going to lower here. So I st have to still line those up. So sorry, yeah, I'm recording it. Okay, so now I'm going to select my uh, my viewport, and then I'll activate the view by right-clicking. And now uh, with the uh, well, firstly I'll bring the field of view out. So uh, using ah now sorry that was my mistake. I've got to deactivate the view to do that. And now I can uh, sorry I'm just being stupid. No sorry, activate the view. I was right the first time, uh, and doesn't want to let me do it. Okay, that's a bit, uh, a bit awkward. Is it locked? No. Okay, so definitely back in the uh, view itself, it'll let me drag the um, edge of my viewport here. And normally you can do that on the sheet as well. I think it's just being a bit difficult because uh, I don't know why. Let's activate the view again. Okay, for some reason I can't select the border there, but normally you um, should be able to do that. Uh, it's not so bad if you have to go back to the view just to stretch the border there. You shouldn't have to though. And uh, I will. Oh, you're back. Uh, and so then, aside from that, you can definitely use the um, the steering wheel or the navigation wheel to adjust the uh, the other view properties. So uh, again, when I click on that navigation wheel, I'll get uh, things like look, which will change the angle that we're looking. So you can see now I can much more easily match the angle of my perspective to the angle of that photograph using pan. Uh, again, I can move the camera position around and hopefully get those angles to be better. And I really do want to bring this across a fair way, uh, but then also I don't mind if I'm looking a little bit to the righty, so I'll look 
and maybe look over to the right because I've got a, a few trees in this photo so that will um, claim pretty well. Uh, again, I've got to deactivate the view by right clicking if I want to go back and adjust the photograph because it's on the sheet. Uh, so because we've got the, uh, the car park showing there, I'll never get it to match perfectly, but with a bit of uh, adjustment, this one I think is going to work pretty well. Okay, so then maybe I'd spend uh, a bit more time on it because uh, right, deactivate the view. So I'll activate that again and just get that looking so it's not showing so much of what's down the side. Yeah, you can spend a lot of time fine tuning that, but that's fairly close to uh, the angle I'd want. And then the um, render settings need to match that. So I'll uh, again deactivate the view. This is just a good habit when you finish working with the viewport um, and you know you're going to go off that sheet. Um, just remind yourself to deactivate the view. It, it'll help you when you go back and open the sheet again. And then uh, now uh, I've just opened up the perspective view itself. And then in the render settings, I've got to try and get the same position I had uh, with my photo. So you can uh, customize image view. I'll change the image to that other file. DSP 225 and then using the uh, well I'll just show you with the width option there because I want the sides uh, stretched then I can try adjusting the height to get a position similar to uh, what I had on the sheet so again just try and find some visual cues there things like the, uh, the railing here lining up with the shoreline there is probably a good one uh, so again, back in that perspective view, you can see the railing here, and then with the uh, render setting, I'll make that, uh, that'll, be, that'll be all right, uh, with draft, and then uh, not much else in the render settings, that'll render pretty quickly, and I can just check that image position. So I can see there, I'm not far off. And uh, so, so again, if you have the um, image chosen uh, when you send it to the cloud, it'll uh, definitely uh, come up with that. But uh, maybe some little things there just to finish it off. If you're fussy like me, uh, some people wouldn't even notice this, but the um, uh, tele or the light poles there, uh, obviously coming up in the um, in the render. So do any of you know Photoshop very well or have an idea how you can take that out? Sorry? Yeah, you can take that out in Photoshop easily. So if you don't know the tool for that, I won't show you how to use it, but the clone tool um, will easily remove things like that and make it look like the original photo never had it. I oh, wouldn't matter if you do it before or after. Oh yeah, sorry, um, if you've got the image baked in, then you probably should do it before, but uh, I wouldn't bake it in. In other words, I'd render it uh, with that transparency option, and then I'd put the, the back, uh, re-add the background afterwards in Photoshop. And uh, that's how I do all my backgrounds, because you can adjust them separately, and that's, that's really useful for outdoor renders especially. Um, oh yeah, so the very final thing I just want to mention there, think about your sun direction. You know, I'm not going to be saying that anyone hasn't met the pass criteria if you don't have the sun angle matching the photograph. So it's not a requirement, it's just a requirement that you render using sunlight. But um, it's something you should think about. So here, um, that angle that you can see, I have the sun casting the shadows, is the same angle as the, basically anyway, a similar angle to the, uh, what's shown in the photograph. And if they're contrasting, it really does stand out. So uh, just think about that. If anyone's interested in these things, there's a great um, series of tutorials just on this, on the Gnomon. If you know about Gnomon, it's, they're the big tutorial 
place for three D uh, on on the internet. And uh, anyhow, sorry, I've forgotten his name, but it's um, one of the masters of this sort of work. Um, has a big series on how to map perspectives with photographs, which is uh, really uh, really useful for us nowadays. But uh, I'll just um, set this to render. So I'll finish the video before I do that.